If you're subscribed to our channel, you already know about the James Webb Space Telescope launched by NASA. Please watch these two videos if you don't know about this telescope. It is the most expensive $10 billion telescope. NASA released the first images taken by this telescope, and in this video, we will look at the photo taken by the Webb Telescope. NASA has released five images taken by Webb. Let's see the details of these images and how they're different compared to the Hubble Telescope. The first image here is of Galaxy Cluster SMACS-73. This image you can see is taken by the Hubble Telescope. When you see the same image taken by Webb, the image is much brighter and sharper. When Hubble pointed in this region, it was expected that it would not see anything in this region. But as it focused, lots of galaxies started popping out. It's almost 4.5 billion light years away. For Hubble, it took two to three weeks to take this image. For the Webb telescope, it only took 13 hours, and the image is much brighter, sharper, and has more details. So Webb is much faster, and we will be able to see such beautiful images of space very often. In this image, you can see the different colored images of the stars and galaxies. The redder the galaxy or star looks, the farther it is. If you see these parts where the images are distorted, it's actually an image of a galaxy. This distortion of the image is happening because of gravitational lensing. We all know the gravity of a massive object is very intense, and it can warp space-time. When light is coming from distant objects and it's passing nearby a big, massive object with intense gravity, then the gravitational force of that massive object will bend the light. Because of that, an image of the object will look distorted. Here in this image, this white part is the cluster of galaxies which is at the front and behind this cluster. There is another galaxy. When the light comes from the galaxy which is behind that light, it's bent by the galaxy cluster at the front. So because of this, you see the distorted image of the second galaxy. The same kind of distortion you see here and here, in this region as well. Most of the distorted images you see in this circular region are probably of the same galaxy. The distortion in this part is because of this white galaxy or celestial object. If you see any distorted star in this image, just find the bigger nearby object to it, and most probably the distortion is caused by the gravitational lensing effect of that object. One more you can notice is here in this part. Another thing you should notice in this image is the spikes of these bright objects. These bright objects look too bright, and the spikes are called diffraction spikes. The web is hexagonal in shape. It receives the light and then transfers it to the secondary mirror, and from there it is passed to the analysis and the scientific instrument. The six spikes are because of the hexagonal shape of the web mirror. You can see this horizontal spike. This is because the secondary mirror is held by the struts or supports, and because of these struts, you can see the horizontal spike. If you compare that with the Hubble pictures, had only four spikes. From this, you will be able to tell which photo is taken by the Webb or any other telescope. If it has six diffraction spikes, then it's taken by Webb. If not, then it is taken by Hubble or another telescope. The next image is of Carina Nebula. This nebula is 7,500 light years away, and in this image you can see the top blue part with the stars and the bottom part in red-brown color. These two parts are separated by the cliff-like pattern formed by the gas and dust. This cliff-like pattern, or the border, is formed because of the stars in the top region. The intense ultraviolet radiation and stellar winds from extremely massive, hot, young stars located above the area are emitting high-energy radiation, and because of this, the nebula material is slowly eroding away and forms this cliff-like pattern. Webb mainly can see infrared light, so you can also see the stars and galaxies forming in the dust clouds in the infrared version of the same image. The next image is the Southern Ring Nebula. This is also known as the Dying Star, and it is 2,500 light years away. It's also called a planetary nebula. The planetary nebula is the stage of a star just before it becomes the white dwarf. 
our sun will die in a similar way. First, it will expand to become a red giant, then it will become a planetary nebula, and then a white dwarf. The web has taken two images of this nebula. The image on the left is taken by Webb's near-infrared camera, and the image on the right is taken by Webb's mid-infrared camera. The outermost shell is released the earliest, and the innermost is the one that was released the most recently. The outermost reddish shell is of nitrogen. The inner section is made of oxygen and mostly helium. The second image revealed that it is not the one star dying, it is actually two stars dying, and they were rotating each other. Because of this, the nebula has an asymmetrical pattern, and usually the brighter star influences the shape of this nebula. This nebula will help scientists to know more about the last stages of a star's life. Our sun will die in a similar way, but it will die alone in about 5 billion years. The next image is of Stevens Quintet. In this image, you can see the five galaxies and the cosmic dance. Out of the five, the four galaxies are close to each other. The fifth one is on the foreground, and it is 40 million light years away from the Earth, and the other four are 290 million light years away from the Earth. This part of the cosmos is rare, as usually galaxies are billions of light years away from each other. Compared to that, these galaxies are very close to each other and also to the Earth. This image is constructed by merging 1,000 images. Stevens Quintet is the front row seat for scientists witnessing the merging and interactions between galaxies. It will tell us how the evolution of galaxies happened in the early universe. Stevens Quintet is located in the constellation Pegasus and can be seen with your telescope as well. The last image is of the WASP-96b. This is an exoplanet and it is 1,150 light years away. Its mass is half of Jupiter and has a diameter of 1.2 times greater than it. It is a hot planet with a temperature of more than 540 degrees. It orbits around the Sun like star and its distance from that star is one-ninth of the distance between the Sun and Mercury. It takes about 3.5 Earth days to complete one rotation around its star. When Webb observed this planet, it found some spectrums which showed the presence of water vapor in its atmosphere. Researchers will be able to use the spectrum to measure the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. They will also find various elements like carbon and oxygen and estimate the temperature of the atmosphere. From this information, they can know what exactly this planet is made of and when exactly it was formed. Webb observed this planet for about six and a half hours. These continuous six plus hours of exposure were possible only because the Webb is at the Lagrange point two, also known as L2. This is the biggest advantage Webb has over Hubble. As Hubble is rotating around the Earth, so its view gets blocked by the Earth after some time. So continuous exposure to any object with Hubble is not possible. We hope you understood the details of these super awesome images taken by the Webb Telescope. The next image Webb will take is of Jupiter. NASA will release it next week. It will be exciting to see what details of Jupiter Webb will see. We will analyze that image as well. So if you like this video, then give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content.